What's going on, guys? Welcome to a new episode of the Santana Podcast. It is fight week. UFC 299 right around the corner down here in the 305 Miami. It's a good card, man. It is a good card. I said it a couple episodes ago. I think, for pound for pound, I think it's better than 300. But 300 is a stacker as well, too. It is definitely the best pay-per-view back-to-back card in UFC history, guaranteed. Um, got some big fights this weekend. We got Cheeto versus Sean. Uh, what else do we have? We have Gilbert versus Jack. We have our girl, Marina. Okay, she's, I think, the, the opener of 299. So get there early. I think she'll probably be fighting around 615, 630-ish. But super, super, super excited fight. Camp went amazing. Her and Coach Bo freaking crushed it. She's shredded. I spoke with her this morning. She is on wake. She's, she's perfect. And then next week, we got Jackie. Um, but yeah. I got clients waiting for me. I just wanted to come in here and say what's up. Let's get right into the episode. Woohoo! All right, people. JC at IHP, you know how we do. We are getting ready for 299, and I know Rio talked about Marina, but boy, pff, girl is ready, shredded, and locked and loaded. So we're going to have a great 299. The card is pretty good. Uh, I think it rivals, it, it, it competes very well against 300. Uh, we got our boy Durino, you know, uh, coming in, and uh, he needs to put on a good showing against uh, uh, Madalena, who's uh, up and coming, young stud. So we're voting for our boy. Why? Rooting for our boy. Why? Because once IHP, always IHP, baby. Let's go, Durino. All right, so we're going to bring you now the FHE segment. Who's FHE? FHE is the number one mental health facility in the country. All right, I'll say it, in the country. All right, they have a huge outfit right there on Federal Highway, both sides, both sides of this highway. So they own, they own Deerfield, baby. They are the best when it comes to substance abuse, psychological trauma. Uh, they work with the first responders. It is a dynamite facility. And I know because we have sent people that are very dear to us there and the way they take care of, of their patients is insane. So if you or anybody you know is dealing with any issue that is mental health related, whether it's drug abuse, uh, psychological trauma, depression, anything like that, FHE is the place. Give them a call, touch them up, and they will touch you up. All right? Now, we started a three-part series on mental health and how our facility, IHP, approaches mental health from a personal training perspective. This approach has never been looked at because we're very big on coaching. So when you look at coaching, okay, what is coaching? Is coaching a rah, 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 rah? No, no, no. You know how we do here at IHP. We look at things. We, we can get down there nitty-gritty, but we like to come up. 10,000 foot level, 20,000 foot level, 30,000 foot level. And so I did this three part series because it's my way of organizing my thoughts, teaching them, organizing the culture of IHP, teaching the culture of IHP, implementing the policies and strategies and methods that create the culture of IHP. So uh, it, it, it forces me to analyze things at a little bit deeper level. So let's re recap what happened in part one, which was last week. What is the one of the most um, spiritually changing experiences that one can possibly engage in? Going to church. Let's say going to church. Okay. So I always say IHP is like a church and it is. And last week we went over what a church does, you know, um, the discipline routine hours of operation, what you do when you go in there, uh, the meeting of the village, like-minded people, surround yourself with like-minded people. That's extremely powerful for many reasons. Everybody is trying to live by certain principles. That's what like-minded is. Everybody is living by certain principles, which may be the gospel, whatever religion you're in, whatever uh, denomination the church uh, belongs to. All of the lessons that you learn from the from the mass, from the ceremony, from the preachings, whatever's going on in that church, okay, in that synagogue, 
There's a routine. There's a delivery of the message. What is the message? How do you implement the message? How do they uh, teach you how the lessons in a, in a scripture relate to modern day life? All of those things are part of the implementation of the principles and the culture. And then, of course, um, the act or the process that gets you closer to something bigger than you in a church or a synagogue prayer, mosque prayer. Here at IHP is movement, right? So then we went through all the church prayer. Okay, that's what goes on in a, in a church. Solitude, connection, self-reflection, uh, all of that is part of prayer, part of the quiet, all done around people that are like-minded. At IHP, it's the same thing. You gotta come in and you have to look at the policies. Can I work out with a tank top? Can I work out with, without shoes? Can I work out with my phone in my hand? What are the rituals of the place? What are the operations of the place? Just the technical stuff, hours of operation and how do I conduct myself in there? Okay, also like-minded people. Uh, when you go into IHP or any gym, you have people that normally care more about their bodies, da 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 da, da. So that's a culture. That's a, the principles by the, which they live by. For the most part, I'm not going to shit on my body. For the most part, I'm going to take care of my body. For the most part, I'm going to be grateful for my body. That's why I treasure it, and that's why I invest in it, time and energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? Um, everybody is, all the trainers are coaching. Just like a preacher is preaching, the trainers are preaching. They're preaching how to perceive your experience. The, the uh, priest and, and, um, and the, the individuals leading prayer are teaching you how to interpret these prayers, how to apply these prayers, all these to your daily, daily life, okay? And then of course you have the experience, the actual prayer, okay? Follow their instructions. When you're praying this, think of that. When you're praying this, this is what it means. When you're praying this, this is how you apply it. Well, what happens in a gym? Well, when you feel a certain thing from an exercise, this is how you interpret it. This is how this challenge of this exercise, this grind of this exercise, the pain of the exercise, whatever it is you want to call it, this is how this experience that is being um, delivered by the effort of the exercise, this is, how it this is how it relates to real life. This is how it relates to the challenge of losing somebody, losing a job, showing up when something's, ner uh, when something's nerve wracking and, and showing up, meaning uh, come in and face that nerve wracking experience. All of that, all right? So that was all part one. Now part two, okay? Let's talk about principles and spiritual lessons in training. Simple, simple. And I did this presentation, this was part of my Midlife transfer, uh, Transformation book in 2006. I did this on tour with Perform Better. And, and I gave this presentation and um, it, it is as true now as I gave it in 2006. And then it was to acknowledge what has to go on for you to do things here at IHP, for you to be a client. Okay, for you to come in, for you to listen, make a commitment, uh, stick to that commitment, uh, value that commitment, understand the process of that commitment, and wait for the benefits of that commitment because it's not going to happen by tomorrow. What does all of that teach you? Okay, what do you have to go through all of that in order to get to the final destination? And for you as a personal trainer to understand that, you as an owner to understand what it is that your trainers are teaching. What is it that you're coaching? Okay. What is it? What is the success of the client after they've been six months with you? It doesn't matter if they drop the weight or not. It doesn't matter if they've gotten stronger or not, which usually they drop some weight, they get stronger, they, they improve. But that's not why they came here. They came here for another reason and they're staying here for another reason. That's why people often don't lose the weight. Maybe they lose three pounds out of the 10, but stay in a gym for 10 years, 15 years, stay with a trainer for five, six, seven, 10 years. You, but, but you haven't changed. I didn't come, I, I came asking for change and the change that I asked for was 10 pounds, but the change that I needed was not the 10 pounds and I got the change that I needed. That's why I'm here. Woo, you hear that shit? That's the heavy shit that personal trainers need to understand, just like a priest, just like a bishop, just like a cardinal, just like somebody in charge of a church, of a group, has to understand the effect and the nature of your teachings.
Okay, so let's go through this. Principles and spiritual lessons in training. Number one, it teaches you, like for example, responsibility, okay? The ability to respond, ownership of your life, the ability to respond. It teaches you to be responsible to yourself. What does that mean? I need this, okay? How can I get this? Well, I don't like to do that, but I need to do that to get this. Let me go and investigate that. That is going into the gym, starting a workout, blah, blah. That's your ability to respond to a challenge, responsibility. It teaches you that because without that, you don't even show up in the gym, okay? Now, that, that also takes courage, which all of this is part of courage because you have to be, you have to self-reflect and say, okay, why am I not happy? And you go, start with anything. Okay, you know, I'm not happy because I'm fat and nobody looks at me and nobody pays attention. That's not the reason you're not happy, but it could be part of the reason that you're not happy. That may be the tip of the iceberg. There's a, something underneath here. But you want to, look, you can't sit there in your sofa and eat Cheetos in order to cope. No, because that gets you deeper into the shit. So that's self-reflection. You have to have courage to say, I got to do something. You know what? Um, I'm sad because I'm fat. And in order to not be fat, I got to drop some weight. Forget about the accuracy of that. Forget about the underlying issue. Forget, just face it there. Okay, in order, I don't, you know, I don't really know how to lose weight. And if I did, I probably don't have the discipline. I need a little encouragement. I need a little direction. I need guidance. Okay, where can I find that? You know what? I'm going to go to a gym. And I heard that this gym is good. Or you know what? I'm going to Google the gyms around me, see which one, make a couple of phone calls, make some visits, and I'm going to land on one. And we'll start with that one because it's better than where I'm at now. I may not like it in three months, so I'll see if they have a cancellation policy. Bang, bang, and then, but I got to make a move now. All right, so I'm not happy because I'm fat, and I'm not saying, I'm telling you right now, that's not why you're not happy. You know, like Freud, uh, Freud, the great uh, psychoanalyst, said, it's not about the lamp. When a couple came in with problems about the lamp, you know, green lamp, red lamp, it's an old, if you've studied any, anything dealing with Freud or Freudian, the cocaine papers, all that, the, the, it's not about the lamp comes up. So the couples were there arguing about the lamp, and it wasn't the lamp. It was underlying issues, but it manifested itself in the lamp. Okay. Your unhappiness may manifest itself in over, being overweight, but that's not true because how many overweight people are happy, really happy? And I'm not talking about obese, but I'm talking about, you know, plump people. And yeah, could they use 10, 15 pounds? Yeah, they don't, they don't need to. They don't want to. They're fine. And they're genuinely happy. They got their life totally in order for the most part, you know, being human. So you say, fat, okay, fat, I got to drop weight. Who's going to help me? Well, I got to go to a gym. That's where people normally drop weight because I don't know shit about eating. I don't know nothing. I don't even know what a push-up is. Okay, let me go to a gym and let me get a personal trainer. I'm going to invest 500 bucks, 600 bucks. A facelift costs $20,000, you know? So I'm going to invest a, a thousand in being happy and dropping weight and getting back into size 34s. Right now, I'm a man. I'm a size 38. Shit. Or I'm a woman. I'm a size 8. I, I'd love to get back into a size 4. Let's go. Okay, you might be more miserable when you get there, but let's start. And the courage to go into a gym. If you're fat and you're not feeling confident, to go into a gym takes a lot of balls because everybody in there is going to be at least better than you. Better than you. They've already been there. They're already underway. Some are going to be shredded and make you look like shit. But some are going to be kind of like where you were a couple of months ago, and that's inspiring, you know? So you got to go there. So you need the responsibility, your ability to respond to a crisis. The crisis is, I'm not happy. Eh, I think I'm fat. I think I'm not happy because uh, people are not looking at me paying, paying any compliments. Blah, blah, blah. I feel like shit. Blah, blah, blah. I carry myself like crap. Boom. You're responding now. You have the ability to respond. You have the whereabouts. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go to a gym. I'm going to invest $500, see where that gets me. That should be whatever. Uh, 10 half hour sessions or whatever, five one hour sessions. Just I'll do one week, three sessions, pay a hundred bucks, $300 and a membership. See where that goes. It's going to be better than where I'm at now. So you go there, you responded to, you had the ability to respond. You were courageous enough to self-reflect, tell yourself the truth, take action and go. You went into the gym, courage. Everybody's there is better than me. Holy shit. All right prioritization. Now that the, the trainer gives you a tour, you like it, you go, here's 100 bucks, here's $60 for the month, and, you know, here's, a, you know, 
whatever they require. Here, here's four, five hundred dollar, a thousand dollar layout. I'm good for a month or two. Okay, here we go. So now um, you made an appointment with the with the uh, personal trainer. They tell you, man, twenty four hour cancellation. So you know what? When your friend calls you, want to go have a beer. When your girlfriend calls, hey, want to go have some coffee? Uh, no, I have a training session from X to one, you know, from five to six. Can't do dinner from, from twelve to one. Can't do lunch. Not today. I can do it tomorrow, but not today. Prioritizing, prioritizing, dedicating yourself to that, and putting that before pleasurable shit. Putting that bef before things that you could use to procrastinate. Okay, that is prioritization. Personal training teaches that. And the harder you are on your clients, and, and you know, within reason, of course, right? But when I say hard means here are the policies, we stick to the policies. Why? Because I, in this gym, we are huge on doing what we say we're going to do. And the clients that stick with us are clients who do what they say they're going to do. Okay? People who say one thing and do another have absolutely no credibility. And we are highly credible here because we're highly authentic, highly courageous as much as we can, highly responsible, all right? And that's the way we roll. Would you, would you like to roll with us? And if the person says yes, they're one of you and they're going to go. So we teach them that by your policies, by your professionalism. You don't have to be a dick. You don't have to be an asshole. You can be compassionate, but very, very down the middle. And I expect you here at 12. And I expect you not at 12, 15, not 10. Don't, don't, don't push me back over work. Don't push me back over pleasure. No, this takes priority. Because if not, you'll never drop, not pound one. Are we clear? That's a coach. That's a coach full of compassion, full of love, but no bullshit. All right? Boom. So courage, responsibility, prioritization, discipline. And now we're going to do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here at 12, 12 to 1. Your date, my date, and we don't break dates. Okay? And you promise me to walk 20 minutes, 15 minutes after every dinner. 15 minutes after every, you have a dog, right? Out with a dog 15 minutes after every, everybody has dinner. At whatever time, I don't give a shit. But after dinner, everybody, the dog, you, everybody goes out and walks. Why? Because it'll have a huge impact on your insulin and your um, uh, blood sugars. And that, a that has a huge, huge response on how you drop weight and how your body metabolizes things and all of that good stuff. Trust me, good things happen when you walk 15, 20 minutes. doesn't have to be fast after dinner. You promise me you're going to have the discipline to do that? And I'll check up on them. Did you walk? Are you walking? Why not? Are you going to walk later? Then walk later. But you walk because you promised me you would. More importantly, you promised yourself. All right? So you're, you're teaching discipline. You're instilling discipline. All right? And then resilience. The ability to do it in spite of how much you like it, how much you don't like it, and however long it takes. You don't give up. You're resilient. Means you, you, you have um, a durability. Okay, you don't get worn down easy. You don't get worn down by a little cold. Okay, if you got a fever, you stay home. But if you got a cold, walk slow. But get out there. Get out. If you can, you get out there. If you're in the emergency room, you can't. But if you're not in the emergency room, not running a fever, you're out there. You're handling it. Resilient. You keep going. Not to stupid levels, but you keep going. You, let, you don't let the little bullshit keep you down. Got it? And it's usually bullshit that keeps you down. And then delayed gratification. Everybody's like, okay, how long will it take? Oh, it, it'll take, oh, it'll take three days. No, 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 I don't want to wait that. Man, dropping, f dropping fat, getting the body you want, changing your blood work, that takes time. It takes discipline. It takes resilience. It takes everything, courage, responsibility. It takes all of the stuff that we are doing as personal trainers. So as personal trainers, you're not only guiding fitness, boom. That's like a priest. What does a priest do? He guides, oh, he guides prayer. Uh, no, he, he does something, but he uses guiding, guiding prayer to get that. What does he do? Oh, a priest is in charge of recalibrating the barometer of the human spirit, of faith. That's his job. He, he does that through the scriptures, teaching the scriptures, relating it to the modern world, going through rituals, stay kneeling for five minutes. Damn it, I know it's uncomfortable, but this is part of prayer. Getting through a little bit of discomfort for a higher purpose. Connecting with something bigger than you because you don't know everything and you ain't in control of shit here. All right? 
that kind of stuff. That's what a priest does. Now, part of what he uses, he is he leads people through prayer. Okay, he manages the church. Okay, same thing. Trainers count down from 10. Okay, trainers may teach a lunge, but that's not what trainers do. Trainers, like priests, recalibrate. They change the barometer of the human will. They recalibrate the human will. What's your human will? What you're willing to endure? What you're willing to sacrifice? What you're willing to dream? What you're willing to pay for that dream? And how long you are willing to stay there until that dream comes true? It's all human will. Faith, spirit, same thing. Personal trainers, you can carry a heavier load than you think you're carrying. All right? You're making a bigger difference than you think you're making. You're helping parents raise children. You are the psychologist, the therapist that a lot of people don't go to. Okay? And you're using exercise and the effort and challenge of exercise to teach lessons. That's all that's happening. But look at all the things you're reinforcing. Courage, responsibility, prioritization, discipline, resilience, delayed gratification, all of the principles that we are losing with social media, with the whole woke bullshit that teachers can't teach, teachers can't defend themselves, the, 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 the patients are running the asylum for crying out loud. Schools are not ruling the kids, the kids are ruling the school, okay? Society is ruling the police. This is, where, this is where this gets us. So no wonder personal trainers are in a perfect position to change society because you are the therapist that everybody needs. If you understand, if you understand the mental health ramifications of your coaching, how important your coaching is to the mental health of society. Not only mom and dad that are coming to drop 10 pounds, but the kid they are bringing you to help them raise this kid. You are that third party endorsement of the principles they're trying to teach at home. And when you get to a 13, 14, 15 year old's parents don't know shit. But that trainer with the body, with the shoulders, with the girl, with the back, with the beauty, that, that trainer knows everything. So you are that trainer. Use that wow that you have, especially on a youngster. Use that wow to help those parents raise that youngster because heaven knows school is not doing the friggin' job and society as a whole is not doing its job. You carry a bigger stick when it comes to mental health than you think, okay? Join IHP, improve the mental health of your community, of society, and our profession is gonna be respected and you're gonna be admired, loved, and appreciated. You got that? All right, baby. Part three coming up next week, we will talk about the coaching, how we coach or everything we just talked about, all right? So stay tuned for that one. That one's going to be hot. All right, all right. Now, now, you saw how measured I was? I think I only used like three bad words and they weren't even the F-bomb. Here, here's where I drop whatever the fuck I want, okay? Now I'm ranting. Now I'm going to rant. Whoo! Did you see Super Tuesday? Okay. Okay, what, what, what is wrong with adults? What is wrong with this fucking society, man? Here we have Nikki Haley, who's an accomplished politician, woman. Doesn't matter, woman. Doesn't matter if she's a woman and she's not. Well, if you compare it to other women, she's done awesome. I don't compare women to women. I compare women to people. She's done a great job with her work. Well, she was um, Secretary of State for, for Donald Trump. And she's an accomplished politician, period. End of story. Woman or no woman. All right, so she wanted to go against Trump. Fine, fine. You go up against, you think you got something? Go up against the person, challenge them. Okay, you're taking an ass beating. You're taking an ass beating. Know you're taking an ass beating, all right, and join the goddamn team. But no, took a beating Super Tuesday. Lost everything but Vermont. And she won by a little bit, which she, I think she gets a proportional because I don't think Vermont is a... Um, uh, you know, one person takes all delegates, not 100% sure. Bottom line is she got shit on the Super Tuesday delegates. She gets nothing. What does she do? Okay. 
I'm going to concede. I'm, I'm not running for president anymore, or, or I'm not running for the nomination for the Republican, which is trying to run for presidency. Uh, but I'm not going to support Trump. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of that fat kid who had that really nice NFL football, where nobody had a freaking football. And the fat kid wanted to not only participate, not only play, no, he wanted to play quarterback, or I'm taking my football home. And I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? So you would rather, you would rather have Biden win again than get on the Trump train. And listen to me, listen to me, okay? I like Trump's policies. I don't like his personality. I don't like hearing him talk because he comes across as amicable, okay? Very few times. Everything is me, 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 me. And he starts calling people, you know, stupid names. Bro, how old are you? You're 78 years old. Start acting like it, you know? You don't have to call somebody a duty, a duty bag, a this and that, a goofy eye, a fat ass. You don't have to call people names. You're 78 years old. You're going for the presidency. You know why you lost the last election? Not because they cheated, which they did in every way, shape, and form that could be cheated, okay? All right? They, they did, but because your approval rating was shit, because everything that comes out of your mouth is shit. Everything you do is gold, but most of what comes out of your mouth is shit. And if you just shut the fuck up, you would have had a 70% approval rating, and the Dems couldn't have cheated enough, and the DOJ couldn't have colluded with Twitter enough to take you down. But they took you down by 42,000 votes. You want to know why? Because you, you, you were marginalized by your stupid mouth. And that's my opinion of a guy that I'm voting for. Because I'm not voting for the guy to be my daughter's husband, to be my friend, to go on a date with. I'm voting for someone that's going to take care of this country, shut that fucking border down, stop this crime wave, stop this bullshit, okay? I don't want my son to have to pay $500 for medical insurance. I don't want to have to pay $1,200 $1, a month for shitty medical insurance, not even great medical insurance. Okay, why? Because we're giving away our social services to immigrants and the gotaways. I'm telling you right now, and I said this about four or five months ago, we got something worse than 9-11 brewing because how many getaways do we have? How many getaways? It took 11 people to bring down the Twin Towers. Say it took 60 more to, to plan it, okay? There's probably 20,000 people from Syria, Afghanistan, China, and places that, the Congo, and places that fucking hate us. There's probably 20,000 people in here. With 20 people, with 20 people, you can, you can shut down this country. You set off six bombs, and you don't have to hurt anybody. Set off six bombs in a, I don't know, in a synagogue, daycare, soccer field, mall, sporting event, theater. Okay? You don't have to kill anybody. You don't even have to hurt anybody. You just have to say, we're here and we're going after all of you. We're everywhere. You'll shut this country down. You'll shut this country down. That's, there's 20,000 getaways because of this bullshit in the fucking border. And now they want to go to the border. First time. First time they want to see about the border. Kamala Harris, the border czar. She, she's been to the border one time. She wasn't even at the border. Okay, so you got Nikki Haley that, well, I'm, I'm going to show you, bang, 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 bang. there's people, I want to get people options. You're fucking the Republican Party. Okay, you're fucking the Republican Party. And if you fuck the Republican Party, Donald Trump could lose. And you know what you're going to end up with? Because, you know, when you want people to give people choices, we're going to end up with fucking Biden. All right. And we're not going to end up with Biden because Biden is, may not see 2024. If he gets voted in 2024, it's Kamala Harris that's going to be our president for two or three years of that term because he ain't fucking make it at the, four, the next four years. Okay? And if not, they're going to do something in May or June because Biden is fucking down the fucking toilet. So what? Michelle Obama? Newsom? Greaseball ass Newsom? One of the worst governors, okay, from one of the most beautiful states in the country, California? You know, it's sometimes like, you know what? Californians deserve the shithole that they have now. The most beautiful state, arguably, in this country is a shithole. Total political shithole. Because you have a guy like Newsom running it, 
and you got border issues, you got homeless issues, you got tax issues, you got economic issues, you have cultural issues. It's a shithole. People leaving, they're running out of California. From Joe Rogan to Ben Shapiro to companies. Hollywood, Hollywood has gone to Texas to film. Okay? So that's how shitty it is. That motherfucker can come in and slide in like the greaseball he is in June. And if we don't get behind Trump, I'm telling you right now, if you stay home because Nikki Haley, is, if, I, if Nikki Haley doesn't get voted in, I'm not voting for anybody. When you don't vote for anybody, you have voted for Biden. You fucking shithead. You're a pussy. Go out there and fucking do the right thing. Okay? I'm not asking you to like Trump. I already told you. I don't necessarily like him. I love his policies. Arguably one of the best presidents we've had. Tell me I'm lying. Why? Because gas was 206, 93 grade at Costco. I know. I know what I pay at the pump because I look at it. Okay? It's at three. It was at 206. Now it's at 389 last week when I gassed up. 389. Okay, when I go to Publix, I used to get out of Publix for 125 with flowers, with flowers. Flowers and champagne, 150. Now, flowers and champagne, over 200 bucks. We were looking, we did an analysis of Florida Power and Light. It's up almost 20% reliable, brent across the board. So you tell me that shit's better now? Oh, the economy, the, the economy is not doing shit. Everything is more expensive and your raises and your jobs are not keeping up with inflation. Get your head out of your ass. And Nikki Haley, do the right fucking thing. Tell your voters, we can't let Biden, Kamala, or, or Newsom, or, or one of the Obamas come in and take this shit from us. Okay? And I would tell Trump, Trump, shut the fuck up. Be a grown-up. Just for this one, can we? Can we just for this one? Because the last time your mouth got you in trouble. It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't anything else. Yes, they cheated. But if your mouth wouldn't have gotten in trouble, they couldn't have cheated enough to take you down. Your mouth took you down. So my, my, my advice to Trump, who I love for what he's done for this country, my, mouth is, my, my, my advice is, shut the fuck up, bro. And if, it's, if th something's going to come out, let it be a grown-up comment. Shall we? Can we stop calling people names? You can call them cocksucker behind the closed door. But you don't do that in public. You don't go after Nikki Haley's husband and make stupid comments like that. That's bullshit, bro. What the fuck? You're gonna lose this shit like you lost it last time. Your mouth is gonna lose it. You got great business sense. You had great policies. Now you know the swamp better than before. You can go in there and crush them, baby. And I'm gonna vote for you. But please, please, don't sabotage yourself. Shut the fuck up. And if not, say something Neutral. Don't even be nice. Just be neutral. Stop degrading people. Behind closed door, you can poison them. You can kill them. I don't give a shit. Do what you need to do. You know how to do that shit. Okay? But when, when the fucking weak motherfuckers hear you, even it out. Me, I can take the fucking name calling and all that, but not everybody's like me. You got a bunch of woke-ass bitches here that if you just say, he's a, he, you know, why did Nikki's, why is Nikki's husband not here? Why is he over there? He must not like her anymore. Must not love her. Not, not very supportive husband. Whatever it is that you fucking said about him. Not necessary. Leave it alone. The guy's serving in the armed forces and you're touching on family. Leave that shit alone. Leave that shit alone. That's cost you more votes than not saying anything. So, come on, Trump. I got you. I got you. Real, get, get me Trump's flag. I'll show you. I'll show you. It's right in the corner. I, I'm a, bro, I'm a Trumper. I'm a fucking Trumper, but I speak the truth. I speak the truth. This big ass thing? Yeah, that big ass thing. Look, I'll show you. This is my roof guy. My roof guy was so upset when Trump lost. He was, he came in sad. I, I thought he was going to cry. Lewis. I thought he was going to cry. He was, oh, I'm not going to need this anymore. I said, give it to me. Because this shit's going to be... We're gonna be, we're gonna be rolling. See that? We're gonna be rolling in 2024. So this is who, this is who's talking to you. I'm a Trumper, baby, but I ain't for the bullshit. I'm a Trumper. I'm a Republican. We need to save our kids. We need to save society. We need to save this world. So the first thing we gotta do is shut that fucking border. Stop with the crime. The biggest, exp 
you know, if this guy starts exporting people out of here, exporting like a fucking product, not deporting, no, 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 we're going to export them. Bus, boom. Plane, boom. Open up some fucking doors and file your ass on out of here. We're going to export them. Bang, bang, bang. Not deport them, export them. Out of here. Do you know how many illegal aliens Obama deported? You guys don't know that shit, huh? <sighs> like tenfold, tenfold what anybody else has deported. The deporter in chief here, like I think it was like 3 million, something like that. The deporter in chief historically was Obama. Nobody said shit. But, you know, if, if Trump exports uh, uh, deports 300,000 or 200,000 out of the friggin' 8 million that have come in here in three years? Oh, he's a racist. How about Obama? I think it was 3 million. 3 million people he deported. Nobody said shit. Why? Because he's black. He can't be a bigot. He can't be a racist. It's bullshit. <sighs> Man, come on, people. If you're a personal trainer, you got to start start teaching your, your clients to be fucking men and women of, of principles. Of, of principles, compassionate, honest, disciplined, courageous, resilient, uh, uh, delayed gratification, resistant. You know, I'm willing, fucking, I'm resilient. I'm, I'm going to be here for a while because I know this is going to take some time. But I got the resilience. I got the discipline. I'm going to stay. Got it? All right. So there's my rant. Come on, folks. We got to beat the shit out of this little fat boy with a goddamn uh, football. We need the football. If not, nobody plays. Okay? So, Nikki Haley, all right, don't take the football home. Be a big girl. Get with the fucking team. You don't have to love Trump. You just have to love this country, and you have to love the Republicans, and you have to love the righteous shit. Let's close the border. Let's drill, baby, drill, and let's get the international shit happening so all these fucking wars stop and people stop dying. All this was Biden's work, all right? So, there you go. Now, we listen segment, which are the questions that you guys sent in. What do we got, Rio? We got sort of piggybacking on last week's, or two weeks ago, uh, favorite leg exercise, right? And I know we just say, we asked you what your favorite one was, but you also did kind of a short little rant on the Nordic hamstring. My favorite leg exercise is pushing a car or a sled. Okay. What, what is it about the Nordic hamstring that you feel is kind of useless? What do I feel about the... Um, the Nordic hamstring. Number one, the recruitment pattern that it has is nothing like anything that the hamstring does. The hamstring never functions with the tibia isolated and, 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 and stiff and not moving, okay? And the fulcrum is right underneath the knee, okay? Right underneath the knee, and the and and securing the the um, the heels, but the action is a concentric eccentric only across the knee, only across the knee. You tell me what action in real life involves that movement, that movement with that load. Nothing except the Nordic hamstring, nothing. So, it is the equivalent of this. Okay. If I did an iron cross on rings, would that mean I have strong shoulders? Yeah, and strong wrists, and there's a technique of curling your wrist in to shorten the lever arm, strong lats, okay. But it's, it's the shoulders, right? Here's where all the pressure is. Yes, other muscles are working, the lats working and all that shit, but here, here, here is where, where everything, here's the first joint, that the big joint, right? It's gotta go, go through the elbow, but the elbow locks out and then you turn it like that so it's not even muscular, but it's the shoulder, right? When would I have an iron cross as an evaluation of shoulder strength or as an exercise to create shoulder strength? The answer is never. Why? Because outside of gymnastics, iron cross, the shoulders will never be involved in that movement with that load. Period. End of story. Done. Even some of the, unless you're a Cirque du Soleil guy, which I've worked in with, with I've worked with, and they do kind of a cheated hamstring curl, Nordic hamstring curl, with well, the opposite, because one guy lays down, the other guy does a handstand on the heels, and then the guy who's laying down, face down, brings up the glutes, 
okay, to put the appropriate, to shorten the hamstring a little bit so it's, it's in that good, and then lifts the, the other person with a pure hamstring curl. So imagine lifting someone who weighs about 150 pounds, 145, with a hamstring curl. But you'll see the cheat. The cheat is they lift up their butt and get that hamstring a little short so it's not totally disengaged when it's, when it's starting the, the rep. It's, it's non-specific. It's non-specific. Something much easier is a single leg uh, leg bridge, single leg leg lift. And if you want to do more kind of like running and in line with the Nordic hamstring, you find a 45 degree bench, 45 degree bench, doesn't not even a horizontal glute bench, 45 degree bench, and find a way to do it single single leg. We have it in our uh, on, in our YouTube channel. The single leg 45 degree uh, hip extension. Woo! With the knee bent, with the foot from the ball of the foot, man, I'm telling you right now, that's your that's your money exercise, high level money exercise, low level. Everybody can do it and everybody benefits. Single leg stability ball or bench bridge and then the hip lift. The bridge is with the heel, the hip lift. Let's say that there's a bench. You put the heel this way and the toes are here. Okay, and, and the, the tibia is here. So boom, you're doing your bridge this way. Hip lift is here. And the difference is the calf involvement from the hip lift plus a longer lever arm. Those two exercises anybody can do. There's zero damage, anybody can do, easy, easy stuff, and they are very, very specific to running, more, as specific you can get to running without running, okay? So those, those are it. Uh, in terms of my favorite, pushing. Pushing is everything, ankle stiffness, the right knee flexion, the right hip flexion, and usually when we're doing legs, it's for the pushing or running, and there's nothing better for running, especially the acceleration phase, than pushing, pushing a car, pushing a sled. So it's, it's beautiful. So that's, that's what we're doing now. Opinion on peptides. Opinion on peptides. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm on uh, BP, uh, BPC 157 and I'm on Mott's C. Okay. Weekly. Uh, I mean, yeah, by twice a week, uh, the BPC 157, uh, it's sub Q daily. I'm not a big, uh, expert on this. So I have no really, um, no knowledge, no specific knowledge that I can uh, extend to you. Nothing that you won't get from a Google search uh, about the anti-inflammatory anti shit and you know the different effects that it has on tendons and ligaments and things like that, blah, blah. You can look it up, I'm not gonna bore you. Bottom line is, remember, I just started on this. And I'm doing so many things, I really can't tell what is doing what. That's the truth. But I didn't give a shit about, I didn't, I didn't want to run an experiment. I wanted to get better. So I threw the kitchen sink, you know, at this condition that I had, at, at my health. Just like Joe Rogan. When Joe Rogan got COVID, he didn't go on one thing. He went on everything. What did he say? And what did Dana White said? We threw the kitchen sink at this shit. They were on ivermectin. They were on, you know, the, the other one. They were on uh, uh, monoclonal uh, monoclonal therapy. They were on NAD, glutathione IVs. They, they hit every, they, they hit it with everything and both survived it really well into third day. They were already working out. Do you think they know if the NAD was more effective than the glutathione and if the glutathione was more effective because it was, you know, put together with NAD or was it something else? Was it the avermectin? Was it the monoclonal? They didn't give a shit. They, they hit everything, everything. And they got well. All I want is at 65, which is June 12th, I want to be in the best shape of my life. Or at least in my the second part of my life. I'm not saying that I want to be ready to, you know, to, to compete in judo. Not that kind of shape. I want to be my blood work. I want my blood work to be the best that it's been in a long time. I want everything under control. I want to be under the least amount of medications possible. I want to look my, my very best considering that I'm 65. You know, the, the skin doesn't hang the way it used to. So, you know, you can't ask for 30 year old skin. You don't have that. So, you know, you got to be within, within reason. You got to be, um, satisfied with, with very good improvements. So that's my thing. Peptides. I think they're good. You know, you know why I think they're good? Because a lot of them have been outlawed by the um, Food and Drug, the, the FDA. For example, MOTC. There's not a person on MOTC that hasn't said MOTC is awesome. Okay? 
And what's the, what, what happens? FDA discontinued. Now you can't sell Motsi. And they're going after, because if they don't have their little, you know, money paws into some shit, they'll make it illegal. They tried to do that with tryptophan back in the 80s and 90s. They tried to uh, make it so um, physicians had to script uh, uh, milligrams of vitamin C, you know, half a gram, you, you needed a doctor's prescription. Not exactly that, but that kind of point. If you want a certain amount over a certain amount of, like, that we, everybody was taking, you needed a doctor's script. That, thank God, didn't pass, but they tried. They tried. They, they uh, discontinued L-tryptophan because of a contamination issue. But there was 25,000 deaths in the 80s from Tylenol in, in one, from one bad batch. You think Tylenol was removed from the fucking shelves? Hell no. So, you know, it's all bullshit. It's all money. I told you. Two people, you know, two organizations, two genres, two structures you don't fuck with. The war machine and the pharmaceuticals. You don't fuck with those two. Mm -mm, you will disappear. If not physically, you will disappear. Social media, you, you, you'll you be ramifications. You don't mess with them. So that's that. Anything else? That's it, that's it Rio says. So this is me signing out. Um, you know that I love you guys. I love doing the podcast. I love doing my lives with my Spanish people on Fridays. And we're here for you. The app is coming out. And uh, we'll give you uh, more information on that next week. All right? So we'll see you next week. Rio will wrap it up. That was, that was a little heated. Okay, that was a little heated. His rant went, he started off good, started off like this, and then he just revved it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You didn't see a lot of me, been busy with the gym, been busy with clients, social media, getting ready for the fights, all that different stuff, but I will definitely give you guys a little bit more tea next week after the fights and uh, let you guys have a little inside look of what's coming up. We got some new equipment for the podcast. So we will definitely be bringing guests in shortly. I promise you that. All right, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. Please always leave a comment, your thoughts, your opinions, like, dislike, report it, share it, whatever it is. We always appreciate the promotion and motion of this show. All right, guys. See you next week.